Tibia fibula femur. All right, phalanges. I know you guys have heard these names before. These are names of bones and these are in Latin. I agree, many of you would have heard the names of these bones. But do you guys know where exactly these bones fit into our body? If yes, kudos guys. I believe everybody should know much more than what we actually know about our bones right now. Because bone health is primary for movement. But if you're one of those, who has heard the names of those bones but you are not sure exactly where they fit into your body and you want to learn about it and also learn a little bit more about bones to know how you can keep them healthy then you are at the right place. I am Dr. Santosh Jacob, orthopedic and trauma surgeon from the city of Chennai in Tamil Nadu, India. So basically I fix bones and I am here to help you get to know your bones a little bit better. Hey, you guys know that when you get to know your bones a little bit better, that is the first step towards making them healthier. So that's my goal. By watching this video, you're already taking the first step towards better bone health. If you decided to watch this video, this is what you're going to hear. One, a true life story about somebody who unexpectedly had an accident in his life but now has managed to overcome it. I love success stories. They always help me see the light at the end of the tunnel. Two, the name of the bone which was involved and some interesting facts about it which will help you remember the bone. For example, today we are going to learn about the tibia. The tibia in Latin actually means a hollow wind instrument like a flute. This is actually because the tibia is a long hollow bone and it resembles more or less how a flute would be. Three, we will actually see what I did for the person. I promise there will be no blood and gore, but I will talk about the principles of why this fracture was fixed in a certain way and we will see before and after pictures of how a fracture looked when it just happened and how it looks after it is fixed. And then a little word about the recovery from the fracture. So two days ago, I met this 26 year old gentleman who had sustained a fracture seven days ago. He was riding his bike from his house, but the headlight of his bike was not working. And he thought as it was his house, it was a road he had ridden on so many times, it was okay, but he missed a spot and his bike fell, landed on his leg and fractured the bone of his lower leg. So when we say leg, the leg is divided into the upper leg and the lower leg. The upper leg extends from the hip joint to the knee joint and it is commonly known as the thigh bone. It is a very fleshy part of our leg. The lower leg extends from the knee joint to the ankle joint. Now the lower leg has two bones known as the tibia and the fibula. The tibia is the bigger stronger bone which bears 80% of the body weight in that area and the fibula bears 20% of the body weight. The fibula bears the body weight more when it is closer to the ankle. Why this is important is, say you have a fracture of the leg, of the lower leg, but you only fracture the fibula. If it is in the upper part of the leg, you do not need to fix that fracture. The fracture will heal on its own. The location of the fracture. How do you describe where an injury has occurred? If it is a long bone. So let us take the example of the tibia. You either say injury to the tibia closer to the knee joint, which will signify that it is upper region of the bone or injury to the tibia closer to the ankle. On the phone, it is really easy for you to describe like this and your doctor will immediately know where the injury has occurred. If you want to go one step higher, long bones are described in thirds. So you could also say injury on the upper one third of the tibia closer to the knee joint, the lower one third of the tibia closer to the ankle joint or in the middle one third of the tibia, which does not involve the joint. When do you suspect that an injury is a fracture? 1. You should see sudden swelling in that region with excruciating pain. 2. There will be an inability to move the limb. And if it is a fracture in the lower leg, it will be impossible to bear weight. So do not try to bear weight if you suspect a fracture. If somebody close to you in your vicinity is suspected to have a fracture and they are trying to walk, please advise them to sit somewhere and not put weight on the suspected limb. So basically, don't move a broken bone till expert help comes. Alright, what if expert help is not coming? How do you move a broken bone? You can move a broken bone, but you have to stabilize a joint above the broken bone and a joint below the broken bone. Listen guys, this could happen to any of you. You could be stuck in a place where you need to help somebody and this knowledge will come in handy. If someone has a fracture of the tibia, then you find a splint 
it has to be a strong solid rod or it can be even a straight branch you have to splint a joint above and a joint below so if the fracture is in the tibia the rod has to extend the splinting rod has to cross a joint above that is the knee joint and a joint below that is the ankle joint so once the splint crosses both these joint you can safely carry the patient to the ambulance to your vehicle or to the car if you do not splint it and move the patient there could be injuries to the blood vessel there could be injuries to the nerves and you could cause further communication or breaking down of the fracture pieces you should also see if there are any open wounds if there is any blood coming out or if there is bone sticking out of the wound i know it's a bit yucky but you have to say it because it will help doctors like me prepare for the patient in the emergency because an open wound means there is a possibility of infection in the bone and you have to know infection in the bone is called osteomyelitis and once your bone gets infected it is very difficult to remove the infection so the best way to treat a bone infection is to not have it so an open fracture has to be washed out in the emergency and any microorganisms any dirt there has to be removed for infection to not happen in the bone so let's see what we have learned till now if you are an emergency responder and somebody has a fracture in the lower leg you know that there is a tibia and a fibula so two bones could be fractured and you know that you should not move the patient you know that you should look for an open injury because an open injury could signify infection and in case if you have to move the patient you have to splint the fracture and splinting the fracture means you have to splint the joint above and joint below and only if you stabilize the joint above the fracture and below the fracture the patient is safe to be moved for emergency care now coming to the most important part i say most important because it's the most interesting exciting part of the entire event how the fracture was fixed so if you see on the x-ray on the screen you can see that it is a fracture of both the bones and it is in the lower one third yes guys now you guys know that and you can also see that the edges of the broken bones are not completely in contact with each other which means if you do not correct it the bones might not heal as they were before so what we did for him is we spoke with him and he decided that surgery would be a good option for him and he did not want an open surgery so what i did for him was i made an incision in the region of the knee just around 2 cm long and using fluoroscopy or live x-ray imaging inserted a intramedullary nail from the knee through the fracture into the lower end of the tibia and i fixed it with four screws one on top and three in the bottom this will help the patient walk the next day the other way we could have treated it is by plating but i prefer this technique as the incision is smaller this is just the surgeon's choice the patient was able to walk with the walker today and he is going to be discharged tomorrow so this was the success story which i wanted to share with you i hope you guys learned something from it and you'll be able to take care of yourselves and your family better in the future see you guys bye bye